what the central bank digital currency is all about is surveilling Americans and controlling behavior of Americans. Today, uh, I'm here to call on the legislature to pass legislation to expressly forbid the use of CBDC as money within Florida's uniform commercial code. Let's not assume everyone knows what a CBDC is, so just briefly explain why that, what that is, why you think it's a problem, and why you're approving of what DeSantis is doing here. Well, so, so what's a CBDC? A CBDC stands for a central bank digital currency, and uh, you know, it's first order. It is something that's a lot like Bitcoin or Ethereum, but it is run by a central bank. And so every dollar can be tracked in the ecosystem. It's more programmable. Um, and that's different than how the current banking system is set up where, uh, you know, without getting too technical, it's more opaque. It's all spread out across different databases as opposed to like one consolidated database where you can track literally every single dollar moving everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So from a technology standpoint, a CBDC is an efficiency and transparency and programmability improvement over you know the status quo if that was if you were living in a high trust society you might be able to do that right problem is we're not in a high trust society unfortunately or in a society where these genuine productivity gains unfortunately will come with a with a hook it's like a it was like a suite you know where it's got a, a a hook in the bait and the the hook is total surveillance total control um, ability to freeze accounts, drain accounts. It's like the euphemism of consumer to government payments. If you take the observation that, for example, uh, you know, DeSantis has come out against CBDC, he's also got a Florida state guard, like a, he's making, you know, make America states again, right? <laughs> <laughs> Federalism is on the rise. And, uh, you know, for the last 10 years or so, states have been breaking away from the feds, both left and right, on not just sanctuary cities, of course, but on gun laws, drug laws, abortion laws, crypto, everything, right? In crypto in particular, uh, you know, you have, for example, Texas says the right to buy, sell, send, and receive Bitcoin shall not be infringed. Wyoming and Tennessee have the Dow laws. Uh, Mississippi and Montana have Bitcoin Mining Protection Acts. The Florida mayor uh, accepts the salary of Bitcoin. Colorado accepts taxes of Bitcoin. New Hampshire is friendly to cryptocurrency. Okay. So, um, what I anticipate is that this is going to become a major political issue, but not in the typical left-right way, more of a federal versus states issue with um, more and more states potentially doing something like reopening the gold window. Here's a preview of an article I'm writing, okay? Reopening the gold window, except it's the digital gold window. So we have bitcoin.florida.gov, bitcoin.texas.gov, bitcoin.wyoming.gov, okay, and so on. And what you can do is it's a simple Bitcoin exchange where you can buy and sell Bitcoin either as a brokerage or just by placing limit orders. And then these order books, um, they can use, you know, commercial exchanges or they can peer with each other. OK. And the state takes a cut of this and they are able to start building up their digital gold reserves like they'll sell. Them. Okay? And they have restored the interconvertibility into digital gold that essentially reverses what Nixon did in 1971, okay? And why did they do this? Well, uh, DeSantis actually put out some stuff on how he might actually have state chartered banks um, banking crypto uh, as a response to the Fed trying to shut off uh, banking access to crypto. At which point, if you game it out, essentially you would be daring the Fed to shut off Fedwire or ACH or other access to state chartered banks which would mean like cutting off Florida simply to cut off crypto, which is probably too big a thing. And if the Fed did it, it would actually show the financial totalitarianism that he's saying is potentially there with CBDC. Hmm. If they didn't do it, well, then they have to actually allow the currency of the people, by the people, for the people to not perish from this earth. Right? We actually have a Bitcoin exchange that is now at a government level. right? And so the thing is, you know, you're, you're seeing the movie Pacific Rim. Sure. Yes. Yeah, so Pacific Rim, it's like these giant monsters come out of the ocean. And humans cannot fight those giant monsters. So you have to build giant robots, okay? Right. So when, when, you've got a when, when you've got a government that is attacking companies, you can't beat a government with a company. You can only beat it with another government, hmm. okay? So 
Florida or Texas has enough hit points to be a giant robot that can stand up to harassment from the federal government. And I think that's what's going to come. Yeah, I uh, I favor separation of church and state, and I separation uh, favor separation of Bitcoin and state, and all other cryptocurrencies and state. So, I'm not keen on state governments running exchanges. Those should be in private hands. They should play hands off toward private exchanges and let them do their thing. And so, of course, should the federal government. So, I mean, that's what I think we have to rely on to. Uh, to preserve our, our monetary freedom of choice, we have to be eternally vigilant against encroachment of our uh, rights and our liberties by the federal government and the, by the state governments. Yeah, I, I do actually understand that view, um, but that's also why I, I, I wouldn't call myself an orthodox libertarian at all. Uh, you know, like, you know, Lee Kuan Yew was pretty much all over the political map and did what, what he thought was best for the country at any one time. Like, you know, whether it was subsidizing houses or doing things that seemed to be for the left or the libertarian right or what have you, he, he did some combination of policies, idiosyncratic, heterodox combination policies. And, um, and I don't think that you can beat government harassment with just lawsuits. Um, I think, like, basically you need another state to kind of be on the other side of that. Uh, and, and I think that's what's going to happen. So um, look at it as unilateral disarmament. Uh, if you are, if, if, if one is not actually taking what Bitcoin really means seriously, um, it means essentially the currency of a free people, that you're not monitored, you can't be, you can't yes. have your savings, you know, stolen and frozen, right? But that, right. that has an interaction. Go ahead. And, th and that's why I'm not a fan of what's happened in El Salvador, where the government has tried to mandate that businesses accept Bitcoin whether they want to or not. Fortunately, it hasn't taken. The well, businesses have, have refused it, and it's been unenforceable. I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. And in fact, there is a difference of opinion in the community on this. Sure. Um, but ultimately, there's actually a higher sort of standard, which is, is El Salvador going to attract migrants on net, right? That say, if there is a seeming violation of one or the other libertarian principle, but they preserve the freedom to exit and other people are able to exit there, and if they're choosing that jurisdiction over others, whatever local trade-offs they make that may be, um, you know, like incorrect by, by one theory or another are... Um, Nevertheless, something that on balance attracts people, right? And I think there's actually multiple solutions to that. That is to say, for example, uh, the Netherlands has a very liberal drug policy. Singapore has a very strict drug policy. But arguably, they're both better than the U.S. has this bizarre, you know, bipolar catch and release type policy where it's simultaneously very harsh punishments and non-punishments, you know. So where Singapore and the Netherlands are very clear about their, their goals. Hey, thanks for watching an excerpt from that conversation with Balaji Srinivasan and Lawrence H. White about Balaji's million dollar Bitcoin bet, the state of the banking system and the US dollar. You could watch the full conversation here or another clip here.